Hello Unity developer and welcome to this tutorial. In this one we're going to continue our C Sharp series and take a look at dictionaries. Let's jump right in. Last week we had a look at lists and before that we had a look at arrays. And to continue our collection types, this week we're going to take a look at dictionaries. Um, and lists and arrays are really great at keeping and storing one specific type of element. So either like int strings, whatever. But there may be cases where you need to store more than one type of value in your element. And this is where dictionaries come in. So dictionaries will store value pairs in each of its elements instead of one single value. These elements are referred to as key value pairs and the key acts as the index or the lookup value. Unlike arrays or lists, dictionaries are unordered, but they can still be ordered or configured in various different ways once they're created. So now let's have a look at the syntax of the dictionary. Declaring a dictionary is almost the same as declaring a list, but with one added detail. Both the key and the value type need to be specified inside the arrow symbols. To initialize a dictionary with key value pairs, you need to use a pair of curly brackets at the end of the declaration. Add each element within its pair of curly brackets with the key and the value separated by a comma. Separate the elements with a comma except the last element where the comma is optional. It's important to consider that when picking key values that each key must be unique and they cannot be changed. So what we'll do now in our scripts folder is to right click and go create C sharp script. We'll call this one dictionary. Go ahead and enter and we'll drag that onto an empty game object in, in my scene. And then we'll double click it and open it up in Visual Studio. So let's get started by typing out the declaration of our dictionary. And remember it's very much similar to lists. So we're going to type out dictionary and we're going to go for a string as our key type and our value type is going to be int. And let's make like a weapon in inventory. So we'll call this dictionary inventory. Inventory. We're then going to type new dictionary string int and then we'll finish off with our two brackets like so. So that's perfectly acceptable and this declares our dictionary but what you'll notice is that we don't we can't see this in the inspector because unity doesn't serialize dictionaries so we can't enter like this the, the string name of our inventory item and its value. So if we hop back into Unity and I can show you how we can put some values inside our dictionary. So we'll go ahead and put some values inside our dictionary. We can remove the semicolon at the end of the dictionary statement. We can drop a line and we'll open up a pair of curly braces. And here we can start typing the items we want to put in our inventory. Now each one of these is going to be inside its own set of curly braces. And let's put an item in our inventory. Let's say we want a sword. So sword will be its key value. This is what we'll use to look it up in the dictionary. And then we need to give it an int and the int could represent its price in the game world. So we could say a hundred coins or whatever. And because sword's a string, we need to put it in between some speech marks like so. And then to move on to the next one, we separate them by a comma and then drop a line and we we'll do it again. And we can then say magic wand. And that costs 1000 coins. Separate by a comma, drop it down, and enter another one. This can they can literally be anything you want. Health potion, which is 200. And then when you're finished off, put a semicolon at the closing brace of your dictionary, like so. Next up, to make it easier to read, I'm just going to remove our update function. We don't need that. And let's make this a little bit bigger. So let's see how we can work with some of these key value pairs inside our dictionary. For instance, let's see Imagine our player went into a shop and they wanted to see how much the sword cost. Well, we can do a very simple debug.log for that and get that the value of that element sword. Go debug.log, open up our parentheses, put a dollar sign, and then um, our speech marks. We can say cost of sword, and then we'll open up our curly brace and say inventory, and we can use our subscript square braces. Then we can type in the word or the item that we're looking for in our dictionary and we'll call it because it's sword, we'll put sword and then close off our curly brace and then end our debug.log with the semicolon. So the debug.log is going to look in our dictionary, it's going to look for the key of sword and it's going to return, it's going to give us the value we have stored there. Let's quickly dive back into Unity, bring up our console, We've got our dictionary script on a game object, so we go ahead and hit play. 
And you can see cost of sword is 100, which is exactly what we were looking for. That's there. We can also change the value of an element. So let's say we wanted to increase the cost of our potions. We could say inventory and open up our subscript operator and then type in our key and we're looking for potion. And we can say is going to equal a new value of 500. We can close that statement off and then we can debug that. I'm just going to copy my debug log from above, pop it there. And we're looking for the key of potion. So let's change that. And we'll take out that one for a minute. So all we're doing here is we're changing the value of our potion in our dictionary and then we're printing out to see the result. So by default it's 200. We're then changing it in our dictionary to 500 and then printing it out. There we go, cost of potion 500. And then we can add keys to our inventory or to our dictionary in a couple of ways. We can use the add method. So we can say inventory dot add and then we would need to pass it a key. So we could say um, we pass give it a key of knife and that's going to be given a value of 50. I mean, let's just do a quick debug of that. Cost of knife. And then we'll give it the key we've used here. A cost of knife 50. So that's how you go about adding a key value pair to your dictionary. Very simple, which is good. And the other way is if the subscript operator is used to assign a value to a key that doesn't exist. So at the moment, let's say um, shield doesn't quite doesn't exist in our dictionary yet. We've just got sword, magic hand, potion, and knife. Let's say we tried to assign a value to a, a key that doesn't exist. So we would say inventory, and then we use our subscript operator. And let's say um, here we put in bracelet, and we said equals 2000. This would then also add it into the dictionary. And this brings up quite an important point about you may not want to just simply add them if they don't exist like that. You may want to check that they exist first before you try and assign values. And to do that, you would use uh, an if statement, which I've, we've gone through uh, a couple of weeks ago in one of our lessons. But you could say if inventory, so the name of your dictionary, and then dot contains key, and then we'll type in bracelet. So it, what's it, what it's doing here is going to check the inventory if it contains the key bracelet, and it's going to do everything within the curly braces because this is going to return as true or false, depending on whether you've got it in there. We haven't got it in there. Whatever we put in here won't happen. If we have got a bracelet in our inventory, we could say inventory subscript operator bracelet equals 4,000. And if it doesn't contain the key, we could just say no such. I'm going to have remove that. And then when we run this, we should see no such item. There we go. But then if we go and add in a bracelet to our dictionary definition, it has to be spelled exactly the same. Any old value for a minute, put a comma on the one above. So now we should see that our infantry item bracelet is in our dictionary and then it's going to run this. And then we would want to put a debug so we can see what's happening in the console. Bracelet found. And then we, you would see bracelet found is now in the dictionary. There we go. And then if you wanted to remove something from a dictionary, it's all very similar to what we've done uh, in our lists video, but you could put inventory and got dot remove and then give it the key between two brackets and we want to remove the sword. And then that would be the way, that would be the easy way to remove the sword key value pair from our dictionary. So that's dictionaries. Um, Hopefully that's helped you out. As you can see here, it's, the syntax is very similar to the list, apart from the fact you have the key which you have to um, declare in your statement. And then each key has to be unique, so you can't have two identical ones in your dictionary. There we go, so that's how you use dictionaries. I really hope you've enjoyed this little um, series on collection types. And next week we'll take a look at our iteration statements. See you then.